Hello everybody and welcome to Board Game Inquisition, where we are fans of games both new and old. Today, against my better judgement, I'll be unboxing Dark Tower from Steve Jackson Games, um, which comes I think roughly from about the year 2000. Um, apparently it is a game of heroism and whacking monsters. Can I see a player number on the box? Nope, no idea how many people can play it. Um, but for those of you who were once nerds a long time ago before it was cool to do such things, you may be familiar with Dark Tower. Um, I remember the comic book for certain. And it comes from an age where, you know, um, Munchkin and Zombies were probably the best board games people had. Um, and it's, it was a time that I guess, you know, has, is long past nowadays, but where it wasn't particularly cool to be a gamer. Um, and so I'm surprised that, first of all, that there was a game. This game was gifted to me, and so I don't actually know what's in it, and I have not played it. So I thought we'd take a trip to the past together, to the time when, you know, Munchkin was king, um, and Dark Tower was something that um, all the kind of the geeks and the nerds knew about. So let's see what's inside this box as we open this time capsule. So first things first, the box itself. Well, it survives this long, right? <laughs> I have to point out this is a second-hand game. It's one that was gifted to me. I don't think I would have bought it myself. Um, but the game, the box itself, actually is in good nick, believe it or not. It's relatively thick cardboard. Okay, so let's see. What do we get? This is where it's going to be funny, isn't it? Okay, I'm going to start with whatever this is. I think it's... Is it the rule book? Where are we going? GURPS 4th edition. Okay, um, it's obviously some sort of sales. Yeah, some new releases. Look, Munchkin Blender had just come out. What else came out in time? Star Munchkin 2, The Clan Wars. Munchkin Fu. Building the Perfect Man. Shea Goth, guys. Shea Goth was just being released. Wow, and these were all the things that were coming out, apparently. And the, oh, here's the prices for everything. Um, this is all in dollars, which is really, really funny. So Munchkin at the time was $24. Don't know why. Fair enough, Chess Games has its own section. Do you remember in Nominee, that's a role-playing game, I remember that. Discworld, the role-playing game, yeah. Um, Ogre, the Ogre book, Ogre scenario book, god yeah. So you can see there was, okay, there was ads inside your board games. Um, I suppose they didn't really have access to the internet. What else have we got? We'll go with this thing. It looks like somebody has taken a bite out of it. It's a curse table. A combat table. It looks like some sort of kind of add-on to help you do things. It's definitely implying that this game is very similar to a role-playing game when you've got things like encounter charts, combat tables, quest locations. Um, I'm already slightly concerned. We have a piece of paper I have with an erratum on it, so obviously there's a mistake in the game. So the Turbonium Dragon counter ref refers to a great treasure that should say magic item. Fair enough. <laughs> Sorry, this is just hilarious. It's a nice picture of a dragon. What's this? Is this more ads? Oh my god. Welcome to the world of Munchkin. Yeah, um, more world of Munchkin stuff. Yeah, but Munchkin was king, that's true. What else are we going to? Um, Dark Frag. So, is that this game? The game says Dark Tower. Frag, the first person shooter without the computer, meets Dark Tower. Um, what? Okay, there's a game inside the game? Um, I'm going to try to find the original rule book, right? <laughs> and I'll come back to this, because for now I'm a bit baffled. Please be the rule book. Where we're going, trade these from Steve Jackson Games. You're kidding me, right? Oh, and I've lost some tokens, of course, but... No, this is just more ads. I'm pretty sure the entire box is now just full of ads. Now. This looks more like something you might use. Oh, I see a board somewhere. Okay. So, here we go. This is the rule book. I have no idea what this dark frag thing is. I think you can play another game with this game, but whatever. So, the dark tower rule book itself. It's made of that. Unless I'm missing pieces of it. It does look like there's holes there. I don't know. So, introduction. So it tells you what you're, what you're doing. Um, fair enough. It's, actually, this game is in part a homage to the great fantasy board game Dark Tower, which came out in 1981, which apparently they're making a reprint of soon, so that's kind of cute. Um, components, yeah, it tells you the cards, item cards, 
the board. How to win the game, that's very important to set up. Characters, leveling up, so it's very much a role playing game. How you play the game, moving around, checking for encounters, victory, defeat. City actions, you can trade with another player. You can turn the tower. There are map spaces. So cities, fields, forests, shadowlands, dungeons, and obviously they all do different things. And then, uh, that, okay, that, okay, this wins an award. You see this? Strategy chips. Remember, it's a social game. You can play without even talking to your rivals, but you'll do better if you make deals, swap items, and negotiate for the strategic use of non-use of scrolls and so on. That's um, that's a really nice reminder. Remember, it's a social game. Um, funny that they felt they had to remind people of that. Okay, so I found two very nice dice, actually. They're kind of, look at this. I don't know if you see them glitzing. They got glitzy dice. Right, I'm not gonna even try and tackle the small tokens before I get to the board. There's a board under here. Look, I saw the corner of it. Mm. Well, maybe I can't. The board does not feel like it's made of something particularly strong. There's the missing piece of our previous thing. And a repeated erratum, which is weird. I'll try to gather up the cards a bit. Ooh. <laughs> you can tell this thing hasn't been looked at in years because it feels like it's brand new. <laughs> Uh, oh, there's scrolls and quest items, and it is entirely made. This entire thing's made of very thin cardboard and pieces of paper, and much hope and dreams. Okay, so we may as well talk about the cards now that they're here. Cards feel actually really good, and it might be because they feel like they're practically new. Um, I am assuming they're going to remind us all of Munchkin. So the Blessed Mace plus six combat, spell monster, tear for monster, rubber protection. You know that kind of stuff. They're very basic. Like even the art on them is super basic. But um, it's a nice font choice. The purple and white actually go nice together. So there's the cards. I'll worry about the tokens and stuff in a minute. So these must be the player card, the player things. So you can be... Yeah, that's definitely it. So you can be this person, you can be strength five, move five. Oh, you level up it must be, because there's two sides. Set them all the way around for you. You can be top deck. Um, Lay Loretta. Uh, Elrond Hubbard, really? <laughs> Elrond Hubbard, why does that name ring a bell? I'm pretty sure he's a scientist. Wasn't it Elrond Hubble who did the Hubble Space Telescope? Hubbard, oh, anyway. Brothers Ark, fair enough. So you always have to have a priest in a party. What's this person? Some sort of Amazon. Um, Amazon. So it's nice to see there were these two, even back then, there were these two women represented in here. Um, and only one of them had to have pointy boobs and the other had to have a belly top, but you know. So at least there was choices um, back then. They are made of nothing. It's like um, it's like comics, actually, yeah. It's, it's, like it's made of comic paper. All right, another card or two we've uncovered. All right, this is also made of something extremely fragile. I have a funny feeling. Oh, what's on the back? Oh, maybe there, oh, so, oh, someone very kindly actually put blue tack on it. So does it make an actual tower? This is what I've achieved today. I've built a tower. I don't know if it wants to go together anymore. You could probably glue it together someday. Okay, so clearly there's a wizard in the tower in the game. Woo, he can stay there. I think he goes in the middle of the board. Let's see what the board says. I'm gonna tell you something kind of honestly here. As old and crappy as this game may be, it's actually kind of exciting what it's trying to do. I think it's not that boring actually. Okay, so we leave the wizard in his tower over there somewhere. He's going to explode the minute I touch him. Um, this still seems kind of interesting. You know, you're having an adventuring game. And yeah, there's things like Gloomhaven and all that stuff to do it for you. But sometimes, you know what? You just miss a little bit of simplicity. So this is the board. It was also made of something akin to comic book paper. I'm amazed it's still together. It looks very, very new. Um, so it seems like it's going to be one of these roll and moves things where you hop around the board. You can't get past mountains. Or waters. Um, it reminds you of a bunch of things like there's a combat table here in the corner down there. There's a quest location. Of course you can only read them if there's four of you but one of you takes care of each corner. Um, but you know what it looks kind of inviting. Like if you didn't want anything too taxing I don't see why you wouldn't want to try this out and just roll, roll some dice and level up and have a laugh at your friends. You know there was something about these type of games that was always kind of fun. 
you know, yeah, they're not the most amazing games ever made, like they're the most, m most ingenious, but that's not what playing games is actually all about. It's about having fun and having a good time with your friends. So I don't see why this game should be any less than any other, just because we've moved on a bit. So obviously there's your player tokens, all made of very thin cardboard. I'm just gonna have a feel of a couple of these. I'll put the map down for a minute. Um, because there's no point in trying to take all of this out. These must obviously be gold. Yeah, cheapy cardboard, unsurprisingly. XP, also cheapy cardboard. These are bad things obviously that happen to you, so they're, oh, I like that one. Put those together. So you guys can have a look. Ooh, I'm really bad at aiming these things at the camera. There we go, that's better. So yeah, um, so that seems to be um, the Dark Dork Tower board game. Um, does anybody like really remember Dark Dark Tower? Like I suppose like I did, well I wasn't even that into it at the time, but I was aware of it. Um, you know, does this game anybody remember this game? Does it mean anything to anybody? Because um, it's so old now. <laughs> but I I have to admit there's still something kind of exciting about what it's trying to do, and I love that part in the rule book that says you know remember this is a social game. Um, I also find it hilarious how, many, how much ads were in the original box. Pretty much entirely ads all the time. Thank God we don't have to endure that anymore, right? We've just got the internet to advertise to us. So you've been watching Board Game Inquisition and that was Dark Tower. <laughs> um, I hope that meant something maybe to somebody. Um, I thought it was a fun, I thought it was something fun that should be done, that it shouldn't be left aside. Um, because all games mean something to somebody, right? So until next time, I hope you enjoyed Board Game Inquisition and I look forward to seeing you for our next unboxing. Take care. Bye bye.